Hello. This is the first in a series of videos teaching you how to make CAM for the CNC mills at the Bechtel Center at Purdue. To start off with, this tutorial will not cover the act making an actual CAD model. In this case, I'm going to be using a BIDC1, as shown here, but you can use this with any model. And as such, this tutorial will not be covering making the model itself. First thing to, on, that we need to do is we need to make a progression file that will contain all the different steps we need to make for manufacturing. And the reason for that is that a lot of, a lot of parts require what we call multiple operations. This is where we take the part, we take it out of the vise, we might flip it over, orient it differently, and we put it back into the vise. And each, one of, each time we take it out of the vise and put it back in, we call that an operation. For this part, we will probably have one operation where we come in from the top, up, up there, and the machine will machine away all these features up top, these little swoops and these little sections. But we can't get everything down to the final size because we need something to clamp onto with the vise. We need to hold onto with something. So we're going to go and we're going to flip the whole part over, and we're going to clamp that right here, and we're going to go and machine away all everything we were clamping to originally. So we need two operations. So as to how we set up the progression file, first thing we need is a starting chunk of stock. And this is just the material that we will have before we machine anything, just the raw chunk of aluminum or steel or whatever you're making it out of. So we can model this ourselves. We can go and set up all the parameters and we can all do and all that. Or we could go and import the one that Bechtel has already made for us. So we don't need to do any of that. To do that, go out of your project and then go into the work holding and stocks project. Uh, it might be near the bottom down here. Uh, I have mine pinned at the top, so it's easier to access. So if you go into this project and then go into parametric models, stock, and then cuboid stock, and here it is. In order to use it, we're going to right click and copy it. And we're going to copy it to our project and then to wherever we have our 3D model. In my case, it's in the BIDC1 tutorial. So I'm going to copy the, my stock there. Cool. And then you a little note that says items copied successfully. And I'm going to go back into my project. And you can see, there you go. That now I have a cuboid stock in my project. Great. So now we could go and do things to this actual file that we have our 3D model in. But in general, it's a little bit cleaner and a little bit better to make a separate file for, for all of our changes and for our progression. So to do that, I'm just going to click a little plus and create a new file. And I'm going to save it. And this will be our progression file. So you can call it either progression or I like steps because it's a lot shorter and easier to type. So there we go. And now I'm going to show you something called insert derive. And this is the way that we can import, import a chunk of stock or a model or something and still have it linked to the original model. So if we make any changes to the original model, then they'll reflect in, our, in, uh, in this model without us having to make the same changes twice. And this is really useful as you will see later on in this video. So to do that, you go up here and you go to insert, insert derive and then go and find your cuboid stock. So in my case, it's right here. And it's gonna take it a second, and it's going to ask, hey, what do you want me to import? And in this case, you just wanna select this stock right here. You press okay. And now it'll send you back into your steps file, but now there's a chunk of stock in it. And you can see this little arrow here that shows that it is an inserted derived part that will update whenever the source model updates. Cool. At this point, I would like to take a brief tangent into the world of flatness. For our purposes, there are three different kinds of flatness. Saw cut, extruded, and machined. Saw cut faces are very rough. They've been caught on a horizontal bandsaw or the water jet or the vertical bandsaw or anything like a hacksaw even. Basically, anything, any saw. And these usually have very rough faces. And the reason that's not good is because if you're clamping on these saw cut faces, 
then they're very bumpy and wavy. So you're not actually clamping out a lot of material. You're basically just kind of using like two fingers or a couple of fingers just to hold the stock and just really hoping that it doesn't go anywhere. When, but it will, it, it might, and that's not a great thing. Next thing we have is extruded stock. And this is the way it comes out of the factory. And it's, it's pretty flat. We have jaws that are designed to clamp on extruded stock. Thing is, it's not perfectly flat. And that means that, not, that means we can't use all of our different clamping methods. Get it perfectly flat. We need to we need to machine it, and this is usually done on either a CNC mill or a manual mill. And if we, if you machine it flat, then you can use something called the flat jaws, which have a lot of a lot of clamping area, but rely on the stock being perfectly flat. Otherwise, they will do they don't grab on very well because they're not grabbing onto very much material. So in this case, I'm going to be I'm going to be pretending and assuming that I'm going to have a machined piece of stock. And so this face and this face are the ones that I'm going to be clamping on. And I need those faces to be machined flat because I'm going to be using the flat jaws later on in this video. If you are not doing that, then you might need to change, then you might need to think a little bit more about how you're clamping your stock or just machine your stock down in the manual mill. It doesn't take too long. All right, with that out of the way, uh, let's import cuboid stock again. Great. That was just following the same steps as the first one. And it may look like nothing happened. That's just because they got stacked on top of each other. Cool. And now the next thing we need to do is import our actual model. In my case, like I said, it's the DIDC1. If for, for you, it might be a different model. So I'm going to insert drive and then the BIDC1. And remember, if you're using this with a different model, then I forgot to save my model, and that's what the error is. Well, you'll see that there's no there's no model thing here like there was with the stock. That's fine. You can just select it up here. And you can go and import your model. And then once again, it's going to stack everything on top of itself. Cool. So one of these blocks is going to be our original stock before we do anything to it. The second one of these blocks is going to have our model placed on top of it, and it's going to be the stock that, that we do before before we flip it over. And then our last thing is going to be our model, a copy of model again as our final version. All right. So however, if you go and look at look from the side view, just putting the model on top doesn't really work because then we're saying case. So you start with this stock and then you magically make more stock appear out of the top of it and, and machine your part out of it. That's not how CNC machining works. What we need to do is we need to make this second piece of stock shorter. And thankfully, that's a pretty easy thing to do. What you can go here is you can activate this component so we can make changes to it. Cool. And you can see that everything else is grayed out, and I can't, I can still move it around, but I can't really make changes to it because I'm making changes to this part. What we need to do is we need to extrude the stock down. But by how much? Well, to do that, we can go into Modify and change parameters. Parameters are little def user-defined expressions, so they can control lots of different things, but the important thing is that you can change them after you've made them, and your model will just update. In this case, I would like to make a new parameter called from top. And this will be the distance that the, that the, stock is, that the model is resting from the top of the original stock. In this case, I want it to be 0 0.1 inches, this is what I found works well, but you can choose whichever value you'd like, or even change it later and see if it works out the way you like it. Cool. And I'm going to press OK. And now I'm going to extrude. Now, when you do this, a warning might pop up that says, hey, some, some components have moved around since, uh, have moved around. Do you want me to put them back, back where they were originally when they were imported, or do you want me to keep them where they are? I want them to keep it where they are, so I'm going to press Capture Position. Cool. So I'm going to select this plane, and if I drag it down, you can see that it's going to make a cut. But I can't make the, a cut precise enough, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it, make a cut, 
that is the height of my model minus from top. So in this case, the height of the BIDC uh, one, 0 0.65 inches. And I can just type in from top. And you can see it says, hey, it's a user parameter. There you go. Now you can see that my stock is a little bit shorter. Wonderful. Now that we're done making edits, we can go back up to the main document. And there we go. Now, you may have noticed that all of our parts are still floating around in space, even those that really should be put together like these two. In order to do that, we can use something called the joint command. In order to do that, you press J. And you can see that I can just select any point. In this case, I'm going to select the bottom center of my model. And I'm going to join it to the top center of the stock. There you go. Now you can see that it's, that it's sitting on top of there. I'm going to press OK. And I can see that when I move this, my model comes along for the ride. Now, in order to make things a little bit easier to see, I'm going to join these two models together, the starting stock and the in progression stock. So to do that, I'm going to press J again. And I'm just going to press the bottom two faces. You notice that one of the models flips over. That's not what I want, want it to happen. I'm going to press this flip command right here, and it's going to flip it right back over. Then I'm just going to drag one of the models off to the side. There we go. And press OK. Cool. Now, if you look at it, uh, you can see that we have a stock. And then over here, we have a stock with a model cut out and a little bit of tiny gap on the top. And that is the front top. At this point, feel free to play around with changing front top and seeing how that changes you, the way your model works. Uh, next, all we need to do is just import a copy of the model again to serve as our final version. So I'm going to insert, derive, and then import my model again. Same way as last time. Cool. And I'm just going to join this to the end of the train. So once again, it flipped over. So I'm going to press the flip command and then just drag it off to the side. Cool. And there we have a progression. Now, one thing you may have noticed is that this stock is really large for this model. We're going to be spending a lot of time machining and going to be wasting a lot of material. Someone else could have made parts out of that. So the way we can do that is we can actually shrink our material down. And to do that, we can go into that cuboid stock we made at the very beginning. And parameters, like the way we set up from top, we can. there's a couple of those controlling the size of this stock. I'm going to go into change parameters. And you can see I have three, one for X, one for Y, and one for Z. Uh, X is left, right, Y is front to back, and Z is up and down. So in this case, uh, set, if, you have, if you have stock already done for your model, you would put the values in here. Stock already selected, stock already measured. If you don't, then just put in some values that are close enough, and then, and then you can change them later when you do get your piece of stock. In this case, I'm going to say that my stock is uh, two inches deep, five inches wide, and one inch tall. And if I press OK, I'll see that my stock is now two inches deep, um, five inches wide, and one inch tall. I'm going to save this. Let the parameters get updated. And I'm going to go back over to my steps file. And you'll see that there is a warning down here, a little yellow triangle here, and another warning here. This warning is saying, hey, one of the things that you imported has updated. You should probably go and pull in the latest version. And I did. I just updated one of the things I pulled in. So let me go and click this. And it will update everything. And now you'll see that. That the stock that the stock updated to a new smaller size. Now we're not wasting nearly as much material. Start with a pretty small, pretty small block, and we get down here to a really little thin sliver to machine away in the second operation, and then we're done. So we're not wasting too much material, and everything is as it should be. Well, congratulations. At this point, you have made successfully made your steps progression. Uh, if you um thank you and if you have any questions remember 
please come and talk to one of the peer mentors in the Bechtel Center. We're here to help. And if you, run into, if you have any questions or run into any issues, come and talk with one of us. All right, thank you.